there is this overall sense of uncertainty and anxiety. Uh, we can expect a sharp recession. The question isn't if a recession is coming. The question is how bad it will be. We don't have a precedent. We do not know how long it will take. The extent of the downturn depends on the development of the epidemic. The only thing I can compare it to really is not a financial crisis, but to a world war. It really is like everybody's packed up and headed off to war. Where is everyone? <laughs> this is crazy. In a regular recession, economic activity falls. A normal recession is not so bad, but at the moment we have a quite different situation. It's a collapse in both demand and supply because we can no longer produce output. The supply chain has been shattered by the coronavirus. So it means people lose their jobs, they, therefore demand falls as well, and people can no longer fulfill their needs to pay their mortgages, their rents. Economists like to give recessions a letter. A V signifies a sharp, brief decline followed by a rebound. A U takes a lot longer than a V-shaped recession. W is a double-dip recession. L is a plunge that stays down low for a long time. I, that's worst of all, that's free fall. We hope that it will be a V-shaped recession. Don't we all? But that wasn't the result of a survey of chief economists. While a good 30% thought that this would be a sort of V-shape, there was a good 30% that were completely uncertain and a good 5 to 10% that actually were thinking this is going to be an L-shape. This is going to take a very long time. An I-shape recession is straight down. We have to have a collapse in production simply because this disease doesn't care about the fact that we're an industrial species. It simply sees us as a species, a host. And hosting this outbreak has delivered us the fastest, deepest economic shock in history. Central banks and governments are throwing trillions at the pandemic. They say whatever it takes for as long as it takes. But not everyone agrees. So how successful have governments been in containing this? We had a financial crisis which not really was solved. We had a Eurozone crisis which not really was solved. And now we have the virus causing another crisis. And we see clearly our strategy of the past 30 years of solving all problems in the economy by having cheaper money and more credit and more loans is coming to an end. There isn't a belief that there is coordination between fiscal and monetary policy, despite the very large sums that are being talked about, that there isn't that coordination at the international level between various governments of the nature that we saw in 2008. A global problem needs a global approach. But this whole pandemic has been about panic. It didn't have to be that way. We've not had a virus that has been this uh, transmissible and this deadly since the Spanish flu. That was in 1918, during the end of the First, first World War, to 1919, 1920. At that stage, we did not have the, the uh, iPhone being produced in 30 separate countries, meaning that the, the system was very short supply chains. Even though it was handled very badly, it was localised to a level that simply doesn't apply this time round. So we should have been setting up our, our production and distribution systems to cope with it. And we constructed this economy, which is so massively interdependent, a very, very fragile web of, of commodity flows and necessary to produce output these days. And to add to it, we have a level of private debt, which is three to four times the level that applied back at the end of the First World War. And that means that people are going to be going bankrupt 
The World Economic Forum says employers it spoke to weren't ready for this either. Less than 10% had ever thought about pandemics as part of their current risk scenarios, and less than 50% had ever experimented with even part of their teams working remotely. But so many people have died while we experiment with quarantines. There have been mass layoffs. I don't know what's going to happen to me. And the effects of the coronavirus could be felt for decades. Well, it could split the society further. It could create even sharper inequalities, drive a wedge between rich and poor. A massive increase in homelessness, indebtedness, uh, social conflicts. I see a much angrier electorate and a much more frustrated public about this, but also a public that recognises the need to move away from globalisation, to go back to localised production. And we will see uh, measures on a macroeconomic uh, level which have been unthinkable before. I could imagine we will see a world of more government intervention, higher inflation rates, higher interest rates down the road, and um, where we see more of an open financing of governments by the central banks. And that's a completely different world than the world we had before. We have to reconsider the entire economic system. Maybe there's too much, let's say, too much of a good thing with respect to globalization. This is a wake-up call um, that uh, technology and digitalization of the economy can help us, but we are fragile and we are very vulnerable in this respect. It will take time to, uh, to recover from that really very deep, severe economic crisis. So back into self-isolation for me. Looks like I'll be doing a lot more home office and reading a heap more books. Just hope those economists aren't right about everything.